Hi, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to everyone. My name is Kevin and I will be your host for today. Right now, I'm here in Singapore and the time is 3 p.m. Now, today we are very happy to have all of you here to, to join us in our Facebook Live session. And today's topic will tell you more about the new GNET1 um, dashboard function. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, do you know actually how did uh, this GNET1 term came about? I think many of you are not aware, so let me allow me to share with you. Now, um, GNET, uh, GNET1, the word GNET, actually came from this uh, Japanese word uh, called ENBA. ENBA also means feel in uh, English. So ENBA, spelled as uh, G-E-N-B-A, all right, and put with the English word CONNECT. So ENBA and CONNECT comes together and form the word GNET which also means connecting you to the field. And thus, GNET1 term came about. So ladies and gentlemen, GNET1 is a very powerful software which allows to uh, connect multiple instruments together. Now with this, customers will now be able to view multiple measurements in one single graph in real time. Now, not forgetting that uh, in our previous Facebook Live session, we have also shared with our customers how can you actually connect um, using GNET1 and with Hiyoki measuring instruments uh, remotely. And uh, in our previous Facebook Live, you were able to see that customers and our Hiyoki colleagues was able to sit at the comfort of their house and connect uh, to our instruments on site. Now, during this unprecedented uh, pandemic crisis, I think it is very useful for our customers to be able to work from home, to connect remotely while the instruments are on site and thus protecting them safely as well. Now, in short, the GNET1 is able to bring all the instruments together and thus our customers can now control all the instruments as if you are controlling one through GNET1. So without a doubt, our customers' measurement capabilities have taken one step forward. So with this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to have my colleague, Eugene Wee, who is also the Product Marketing Manager for Hiyoki Singapore, to share with us more about the new GNET1 dashboard function. And not forgetting, at the end of this session, we will also be uh, picking some questions from our customers. And you can uh, ask our colleagues, uh, I mean, ask Eugene uh, for, uh, for any questions that you have with really uh, regards to GNET1 dashboard function. So without further ado, allow me to bring uh, Eugene online right now. Eugene, hold on a while. All right, good afternoon, Eugene. Okay, good afternoon, Eugene. Sorry, let me on your mic. Okay. We are joining us this afternoon. Uh, we are really happy to be here today to present on the Janet One dashboard function. Uh, most importantly, I wish that everybody is doing okay and safe from the COVID-19 uh, virus. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let us start with the presentation. Hmm. All right. So let me bring uh, Eugene's slides online as well. Okay. Okay, your slides are ready. Okay, so Eugene, over to you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> um, before I begin my presentation, I would like to say a big welcome to all our Hyoki Facebook fans uh, joining us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Eugene from Hyoki Singapore, and I'm taking care of product marketing department. So during this unprecedented COVID situation, it is imperative for us to adapt to different style of doing business. And one of them is Internet of Things. Now, if we do not make the necessary changes from our previous way of doing things to the new norm, which is digital transformation, it is going to be very difficult for businesses in various sectors, which requires test and measurement applications. So in this presentation, I would like to highlight the usefulness of the Janet One software. So this is the topic of my presentation today. All right, before we dive into the Janet One, firstly, we should understand what is IoT, okay, Internet of Things. Uh, let me read aloud the definition. 
Internet of Things is an environment in which objects, animals, or people are provided with unique identifier and the ability to transfer data over a network without requiring human to human or human to computer interaction. To put it simply, objects are the Hyoki instruments and unique identifiers are the internet protocols or what we call IP addresses. And network is referring to the internet or the non-internet space, um, something like the VPN, uh, in order for the data to be transmitted. Okay. So when we, when we mention M2M, machine to machine interface, it is the technology that enables a network device to exchange information with each other without human intervention. This information being transmitted can be done via wireless or wired connection. So it is what we call nowadays a smart system. Now, Hyoki products can be integrated into a smart system for logging, for monitoring, and for alarm notification via email. So these are some of the examples of a smart system. So for example, uh, how does a vending machine, the one that sells drinks, okay, know when to top up the cans of drinks whenever the quantity is low? So they have a smart system installed inside the, the drink vending machine, which is able to detect when the quantity is low, and then they will notify the vendor to come and top it up. Right. So another example is a photocopy machine. When the ink runs low, the same thing, the company will come and top up the, the ink. Another example, uh, smart metering for a revenue meter, let's say for our homes. Right? Uh, this revenue meter is a, a smart system which will send a monthly power consumption reading to the power company so that they can do the billing and send it to the uh, residents. Okay? So all these applications form the basis of IoT. And what are the tools necessary for setting up IoT for Shoki products? It is quite simple actually. Right, these are what you need. You need the sensor, which is referring to the Hyoki product. Uh, you need the router, a commercial router or an in industrial router. Right? And this, uh, you need the router with the LAN port for transmitting the data along with the data SIM card. Okay. And lastly, you can monitor uh, using your internet browser via HTTP uh, remote monitoring, or you can use the Genet One software for data collection and also for monitoring. So these are the ways which I mentioned previously on how a smart system works uh, with IoT. You have the smart system here, and you have the SIM card that's installed in the router. And then this will do the trans transmission of data. Okay, so these are the products of uh, Hyoki products with IoT. On the left, uh, you have the, uh, IoT, the, the Hyoki products which are connected to the router here with the data SIM card installed. Okay, it has to be a data SIM card, not, uh, uh, not a SIM card that can be uh, used for making phone call, right? It has to be a pure data SIM card. Now the data can be piped back to the laptop installed with Genel 1 for FTP, okay, uh, file transfer protocol. This is a automated uh, downloading of uh, data to your laptop. Or you can use a third-party FTP software, like F for example, Fazila. Okay, And also the data can be viewed via the HTTP remote monitoring as such. So the products with IoT capability will have a communication screen in the, in the Hyoki product as shown. And this is a memory recorder uh, for MRA875. So you have the IP address, which you can set over here. You have the subnet mask, and then you have the uh, gateway. Okay. This is for the A75. And then for the PQA, similarly, there's also a communication setting as shown here. IP address, subnet mask, and the gateway. And then this will be for the power logger. So if your customer has a need to monitor or log data from instruments that are far apart from each other, they are able to transmit data with the use of static IP address. Okay. These are all static IP address. Okay. They are all fixed numbers which cannot be changed. 
However, the normal data SIM card that we have in our uh, mobile phone or the tablet, it cannot be used because it is using dynamic IP address. Dynamic means that it will change over time. Okay. So most companies, most telco companies are also using uh, masking techniques to hide this dynamic IP address so that the router is unable to know the actual public IP address. So in short, the telco companies are forcing us to pay for a static SIM card for industrial usage. And this can be very, very expensive. The other ways of connecting to Genet 1 is via a local area network or LAN okay, or a VPN. If your instruments are all located in the same compound within your factory production area or laboratory, it is easy to connect all to the LAN as such. Okay, you have a dot 20, dot 40, dot 30, very easy to set. Right? Now it is it is it's the same concept if you're using a VPN a connection. Okay, once you enter into the VPN of the router, and then you can also access into the local area network. Now, what's the advantage of having this kind of application? So imagine if you have a laboratory testing on electric vehicle or solar PV testing, you can set up multiple devices such as a power analyzer to measure efficiency and uh, power data. You can, you can also have data logger to measure temperature and strain. You can have memory recorder to measure on the CAN bus parameters. You can have PQA to measure on the power quality. Now all these devices can be locked simultaneously using the Genet 1. Okay, with all these measurement parameters measuring at the same time, we are able to correlate the relationship between the different parameters instead of combining all the measurement based on the different timestamps. Okay. So which means that we have to synchronize all the products at the same timestamp, which is quite tedious. So I shall now show you the difference uh, when activating local area network and VPN at the same time. All right, this is possible, so I will show it to you right now. Okay, I'll just change my screen over. Okay, you can see from here, uh, we have the PW6001 that is remotely connected in the company network. So it's showing you 196.168.1.16. This is the local area network used in my company. All right. So I'm also using VPN to connect to my home. And I'll show you what it means. I'll click onto this. Okay, this is the VPN that is showing the webcam showing in my home. All right, you can see the cat litter box, you can see my sofa. But look at the IP address. It is showing 192.168.1.14, colon 23300. This is a port number. So this is using VPN to connect to my home. And I'm using uh, IP address to connect directly, the local, the local area network IP address. Right? So this is possible. We shall now connect back to my presentation slides. So we shall first take a look at the Janet series made available to us free of charge. So there are a total of two Janet softwares. First, is the Genet Cross apps, which can be downloaded from your mobile or your tablet devices. The second is the Genet One, which can be downloaded on your laptop. Okay, the Genet One connection is using, uh, sorry, the Genet Cross connection is using Bluetooth, whereas for the Genet One is using uh, static IP or the local area network or even the VPN. Yeah, I shall now spend more time to explain on the Genet 1 software. Okay, the first function from the Genet 1 is the console function, which will allow you to conduct FTP and HTTP remote monitoring. 
right? So you will need to connect to the appropriate IP address as shown. Select the type of uh, Hyoki products that you have that is capable for this IoT. And then if the connection is good, you can see a green label on the left. And then you can start to do uh, the functions that you want to do. So this is the example of HTTP, HTTP remote monitoring for the LR8410 data logger via the console function. So you can do remote control, you can monitor uh, the, the waveform, you can do settings, start stop recording uh, as such. Okay, all these products indicated inside the green box can be used for logging, dashboards, clock synchronization, and remote control. Okay, clock synchronization means that you want to set your uh, PC timing to be synchronized with the device timing, right? Now, both these functions will be required, uh, will require a LAN connection, uh, while the USB connection is primarily for the battery tester, the BT3554. As for the FTP function, uh, file transfer protocol, only the products indicated in the blue box can support that. So I also need to highlight that the Genet One software is only for window platform, okay? Only for window. So it's not ready for MacBook yet. So I shall now touch on the logging function, which can be connected up to 15 instruments. A total of 512 parameters can be recorded simultaneously at different time interval. The fastest is at one second. Okay, the compatible instruments are shown here. So we have the PQA, power logger, data logger, memory recorder, MR6000, and also the power analyzer. So this is a simple topology of how the instruments are connected as an IoT. So you, you have the Hyoki products here connected to the router or the access point or a repeater. And then you, if you are connecting as a router, you need to install with the SIM card, data SIM card. And then with the computer laptop, you can do the logging from there. Of course, your laptop has to be installed with the Genet One software for data collection purpose. Okay, in this slide, we can select up to 15 instruments uh, with either static IP address or LAN IP addresses or VPN IP addresses. Now, if the device is in green, the, the, the icon is in green, uh, it is connected successfully. Uh, if not, then it will be a red indication as such. Okay, we can connect up to 512 parameters simultaneously. So you can connect the frequency, uh, you can uh, lock the uh, voltage RMS, current RMS, or the uh, voltage THD of all the different channels. So this is an overview of the logging function. On the left screen, you can see the multiple connected devices and its logging parameters. In the center screen, you can see the graphical display in RMS, and then on the right, you can see the numerical display, uh, which is similar to the CSV, uh, CSV mode. So with this logging capability, we are able to connect to multiple devices and logging simultaneously. Then we can also analyze those parameters and correlate the relationship with each other. So for example, we can analyze how a ambient temperature can affect the efficiency of a particular inverter measurement. And most importantly, they are all recording at the same timestamp. So I shall now explain about the new dashboard function in more details. And this is the latest uh, version upgrade using the Genet One version 3.10. Okay, the dashboard connectivity is similar to the logging function. You can connect up to 15 instruments, uh, record up to 512 parameters. And uh, this new function will also will allow you to create a standalone building monitoring system, a standalone BMS. So what is a BMS? A BMS will allow the user to connect all the parameters like temperature, voltage, current, uh, frequency, and ensure that it is within the threshold limits. However, it does not allow the user to log the data. Okay? It doesn't allow it to record. You, are, you can only monitor the data.
But the good news is that in the future version upgrades, our HQ will incorporate more of this kind of functions like logging, um, waveform monitoring and such. So I shall now go through the steps to prepare for dashboard measurement. Firstly, you will need to select the map editor in the dashboard function. And then after that, you need to select the IP address, the type of equipment. And once you have the green light, okay, you can select the channels that you want to record. So go ahead and select the different channels. And then after that, you can go to this advanced uh, tab here to select the alarm parameters that you want. So alarm threshold means that you can set a low threshold and a high threshold. Anything that goes uh, beyond this threshold will uh, activate the alarm. So following that, you can also add uh, layout images on the dashboard. Okay, this layout image can, can be a map of a data center, a facility layout, a production plan layout, so on and so forth. Okay, after that, you can then add the pressure uh, uh, measurement parameters that you wish to monitor. So as such, so you can have temperature, you can have the relative humidity, the power measurement. Okay. So these are the various types of layout parts that you can include inside. As I mentioned last now, the image of the layout, the monitoring window, and then uh, you can have the uh, measurement label, value label. You can have a graphical uh, low or high uh, graphical label, uh, on-off indication, either a green or a red. And then you can also add in uh, labels, command labels, like first floor, second floor, uh, voltage or current, things like that. Okay, so once you have done that, then you can do the uh, start the monitoring and then select the time interval that you want. And uh, remember that I mentioned last time about the alarm, right? Once the, the measurement parameters goes above a certain threshold, then you will see a red indication as such. You can change the color for this also. It can be red, it can be blue or anything. So once the alarm uh, activates, then you will see a box here that will show you the alarm lock. It will show you the, 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 the day, the time, and then it show you what product, which channel, what is the information that, uh, the, of the alarm that, that uh, was activated. So this is like a notification screen. Okay? Once you confirm all, then you can proceed on again. Okay, for some companies, uh, they don't want to have any kind of false alarm. They can also have this kind of uh, mass, time, mass time period. So you can put like certain periods from this time to this time, uh, any kind of alarm notification will be masked off, will be hidden, right? So it won't, it won't be activated. And then you can also have a, a operator mode or administrator mode. So once you set to administrator mode, you put in a password, so you can change all the different settings. But once you go into operator mode, you cannot change any setting unless you log in using the password. So these are the additional features, uh, security features that uh, will allow you to to prevent people from accessing into your layout pictures or, or, or prevent them from changing any kind of settings in the dashboard. So then now I'll go into the actual demo. I'll show you what the, the dashboard layout will look like for a simple example. Okay, I'll stop sharing again. And then I'll go on to the Janet dashboard setting. Okay, very quickly. All right, <clears throat> so now you can see uh, the Janet One software. So you have two types. You have, okay, of course you have the data. Data will show you all the different parameters that you have, uh, all the data points that you have uh, recorded. And then you have functions. Functions will show you the logging function or you want to do a dashboard function. And then the console, okay, as such. Okay, let me go back again. Okay, this will be the console function that I mentioned just now. Okay, let's go back to the dashboard. So assuming that we click onto this dashboard, it will bring you to this screen here. Okay, it will bring you to this screen. So uh, what I'll do is I'll stop the recording again. So let me explain these layout pictures that I've uh, included. Uh, I have a solar PV, a mini solar PV set up in my office. Uh, I have a laptop that is having a Janet One software 
connected to the router, to the company router. And then I have data logger like the LR8450, the new data logger that is recording the solar panel temperature, uh, the room temperature, and also the ambient temperature outside. Okay. And then uh, outside my office, I have a small solar panel. And the solar panel, I have also included a pyranometer to measure the irradiation. Okay. So this is the irradiation level. And then I also have the uh, watts per meter square, the value. And then I have a inverter that is measuring the efficiency uh, between the output and the input power. And then I have the battery parameters and also the, this is the DC side and then I have the AC side, more, uh, the load side, which is AC. Okay. So I will do the uh, monitoring now. I start the measurement. Okay, then you will ask me uh, how many seconds do you want? So I'll put the fastest, of course, one second, and then I'll click start monitoring like that. Okay, so when I start the measurement, what happened is that uh, I will get a screen that, that show me all the alarm. Uh, I deliberately put in these alarms to show you that this uh, BMS, standalone BMS system, is able to indicate to you that there is a problem with the measurement parameters. So what are the problem problematic measurement parameters? Okay, they are the temperature of the solar panel. It has exceeded my threshold. I put in 35 degrees, for example, but it's measuring 41 degrees. So it's very, very hot. It might uh, melt my, my panel or damage my panel, right? Okay, then I also set a threshold for the irradiation. Anything that goes below 200 watts per meter square will indicate as a red. So it's telling me that, oh, uh, right now the sun is not shining, the sunlight is not uh, shining bright enough for my solar panel. So then there's some kind of problems for me to generate enough power for my AC load. Okay. And then of course, uh, we have the battery, battery parameters and the AC parameters. Uh, Kevin, perhaps you can remove my, my, my picture yeah, so I can show the audience. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so this is the battery parameters here. Okay, you can see uh, the voltage, the current, and also the, the power. And then uh, the AC load is showing you 230 volts, 39 milliamp, and 3.13 watts. Okay, this is just a mini load simulating an AC load. And then, of course, this is the overall, overall parameters that I'm recording, the voltage for channel 1, 2, and 3, and 4, the current, the power, the reactive power and also the efficiency of the inverter. Okay, so this is just a, a setup, a, a very small mini solar PV setup. So for example, if let's say you have a EV, EV laboratory, right? You want to measure the various parts of the EV vehicle, like the inverter, uh, you want to measure on the output and input inverter, you want to measure the temperature inside the vehicle, you want to measure the outside of the, the, the vehicle, and then you want to measure, let's say, <clears throat> the the strain or the uh, the vibration of the vehicle. All this data can be collected in the same layout picture. Okay, so probably another example I will show you. You can make you uh, understand better. Okay, we have this here. Okay, this is close to my heart because I I used to do a data center. All right, so let's say we have a data center. All right, a data center BMS. Now this BMS here is just a very small uh, uh, data center. So I want to show uh, the BMS uh, of the corridor temperature, which is showing me 32 degrees. I want to see the, sorry, I want to see the switch room temperature right now, which is indicating uh, 41 degrees. So something's very wrong, right? The switch room is very, very hot. So probably the air, con air condition has gone down. So that's why the temperature is, has gone up. So as a operator of a uh, facility, when I see such a indication, I will like, okay, please go and take a look. Uh, go and find out what happened to this uh, switch room. Why is it so hot, right? And then for the power, similarly, right, uh, we are measuring three phase. So we have the channel one, two, and three, or the L1, L2, L3. So I purposely set L1 a certain threshold for the voltage. So anything that goes above 400 volts, 
it will indicate red. Okay, anything that goes above 100 ampere will indicate red to show me that or probably there's a kind of a overload happening right now for my uh, L1 phase. Okay, so these are very simple indication. And all these are actually registered in the alarm log, not forgetting. Uh, okay, all these are registered in alarm log. It's everything is being recorded. All right, so <clears throat> uh, these are very simple example of a standalone BMS. So instead of investing in a very expensive BMS system like 20, 30K, uh, Sing dollar, okay, if you have Hyoki products, you can use the free standalone BMS that we have for you. And then you can connect it up and come up with a standalone BMS for your simple monitoring. So how simple is that? Uh, I, can't, I can't elaborate further in that sense. Oh, so uh, that's all I have for this presentation. Uh, if you have any question, please do ask. Uh, right now. Uh, Kevin, over to you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Eugene. So um, I think what you have shown earlier um, is, is, is a very useful function. Uh, I think um, for many of the engineers who like to present the data uh, in a very nice way, they can actually now present um, all, all the measurements uh, uh, from all the instruments um, and the, they are able to just view it easily in one screen. I think uh, it actually makes a, a lot of their work much easier. Now, uh, I think we are now able to pick up some questions. So um, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please um, send it in. We'll be uh, answering um, live for you. I think while we are waiting for questions, maybe just to check with you, Jin, I know that you have a lot of uh, experiences on site. Um, in your opinion, um, what do you think the um, GNET1, um, GNET1 dashboard function, um, how, 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 how will it benefit or what, what industry uh, will, will Will GNET1 dashboard function benefits? What kind I think of people? Probably, mm. uh, okay, one of the most obvious re, uh, application would be for the maintenance people, for the facility people. So let's say I'm a facility manager in a hospital and I want to monitor the temperature of uh, a blood storage room or the AHU room or the uh, temperature of the patient rooms. Right. I can set up various data loggers in the various location. And then for my room, okay, I can see all the parameters in one screen. Okay, anything, any alarm that, that, that is uh, shown, okay, immediately I can send people to go and investigate and quickly resolve the situation. Right? And mm -hmm. even for data center, similarly, uh, I think most data center will have a BMS. I think they have a BMS, a very comprehensive one. But let's say if they want to just monitor on a particular section inside this data center, okay, maybe the customer of that server, that hosting server, uh, request for you to monitor on the temperature for that particular area. So the as the data center uh, operator, I can just install a data logger there, and then I use the Genet Want dashboard to show me okay, the, the real-time monitoring. So once the, the temperature exceeds a certain range or the humidity exceeds a certain range, so immediately I can go investigate. So this mm. is a very simple solution. Instead of uh, going there, you know, checking to make sure the temperature is within the, the threshold, with this dashboard function, it's a standalone BMS for you. So it's very easy for you to just monitor, sitting at your desk, looking at the screen for, to, to, to observe for any kind of anomalies that can happen. Mm. And most importantly, it's complimentary. So <laughs> it's actually, it's a complimentary software from Hioki that we will, we will actually want to help uh, all our customers, all our engineers out. So um, simply just by purchasing our products, I think uh, Eugene mentioned some of the products include um, Power Analyzers PW6001, Power Quality Analyzers PQ3198, even Power Loggers PW365, PW360, Memory Data Loggers RA4450. There's a, there's a range of the um, products that are compatible with the dashboard function, complementary dashboard function, especially for you. All right, so uh, we, have an, we have a question here from uh, Fedinel. Uh, his question is that, hi, Eugene, is it possible to connect the NTP and SCADA protocol? Okay, uh, firstly, NT, NTP we don't have, but remember that the Genet one enable you to synchronize 
the, the laptop time with the device time. So you just go in there and, cl and click on to clock synchronization, then both the timings are synchronized. Okay, mm. uh, that's for NTP, right? Of course, the NTP, the, the more comprehensive one, you just plug in the, the LAN cable, then everything is synchronized. But we don't have that kind of function. All right. And the second one is the SCADA protocol using the RS485. We don't have that also. Okay, our devices are not compatible with SCADA, SCADA system or SCADA protocol. Mm. Ours is more like the TCP IP type. Mm. Uh, points noted, uh, Ferdinand, if our Japanese engineers are online, we'll feedback to them. <laughs> okay. And we have a lot so, of questions on this uh, SCADA protocol. Right, okay. Mm. Okay, so Ferdinand, we hope that uh, we have answered your question. Uh, any more questions coming, coming from, the, from the audience? Today, we are taking a bit slow, probably it's the end of the month, everyone is chasing sales, uh, but not to worry, we'll actually be uh, downloading the video and upload uh, into YouTube or uh, and also Facebook later. We'll, we'll need to do some edits before we post up online. Okay, any other questions from the floor? Okay, from uh, Thailand, uh, Kun Nusara, Eugene, can possible change tool to another type? such as gauge meter level gauge. Yeah, just like I mentioned to you uh, mm. in the example, it can show you the level, right? So while measuring the solar irradiation, it's a red color level. So once the irradiation goes up, the level will increase like that. So mm. just, that, just that, uh, that indication only. We don't have those kind of like metering, flow meter, no, we don't have that. But of course, your, your this uh, suggestion is good. I'm going to... Uh, let our HQ know to have the kind of flow meter. Okay. Be careful of what you promise because everyone will be commenting now. <laughs> and Eugene will bring it across to uh, our engineers. We'll try our best. Actually, um, yes. joke aside, actually, uh, we love to hear uh, feedback and comments from our customers, our distributors. So um, as much as we can, uh, we bring your comments across to our engineers and uh, our headquarters uh, take all comments very seriously and thus they have been uh, improving the uh, software and the product uh, um, very, very often. So um, to, in order to keep up with the uh, current trend. So um, with your comments, I think it is very much appreci appreciated and we hope that uh, we can bring all your comments across to our engineers. Okay, next question also from Ferdinand. Um, Eugene, how many maximum device, oh, okay, this one I know as well. How many maximum device can connect to GNET1? How many maximum device can connect to GNET1? Can anyone from the floor, uh, answer <laughs> just testing because uh eugene probably already uh, shared this uh, earlier mm. i think the the maximum device is 15 uh, one five correct mm. eugene yeah one five correct. so i can answer for eugene okay. remember the the magic number one five fifteen. So, um, at the moment now we we it's fifteen. I mentioned, um, you know, as time goes by, we are not too sure how how well will the uh, software improve, and we are not too sure how how many equipments can can be connected. But I think as of now, the engineers find that uh, fifteen is the nice number uh, uh, to to work with. Uh, of course, from the floor, if you think that oh now we need more numbers, we need more equipments, you can always let us know. I saw Nusara commented 15. Yeah, thanks, Nusara. <laughs> that's that's how uh, I mean that's that's a very good way how our, our customers are connecting um, with one another. I think this is a, a mutual learning session. Uh, so interaction is very much appreciated appreciated as well. Yeah. Any other questions from the floor? Yeah, so anyway, uh, while still waiting for a question, I think Jeanette one is uh, um, there. There's a lot of um, functions that I think uh, just to just to uh, summarize what Eugene mentioned, uh, Jeanette one is able to allow our customers to connect remotely um, from home. You are able to 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 connect to the instruments on site. Jeanette one can also help to combine all the measurements. Uh, up to 15 instruments uh, together and uh, you can actually view all the single graph all the other graph in one single screen so it is very very convenient and the dashboard function now can actually allows you to put an arbitrary image um, and you can actually monitor the 
the instrument's performances. So um, it is very useful. Uh, we are constantly improving this complementary genome. What I've been repeating is a complementary software. Um, so, so we really hope that you can make use of this um, Genet1 um, software if you have purchased the, uh, the products that was mentioned by Eugene. Mm. So Kevin, right. also we are running a campaign, right? Ah, uh, that's right. So, uh, good point. So, um, just to share, we are also running a campaign because it's our ten years anniversary. So, um, we are running a campaign whereby, uh, when customers purchase uh power loggers, power quality analyzers, and also the uh memory high logger, uh, LR, uh the latest one will be the LR eighty four fifty. So, um, you will be getting a commercial router and. You know what is actually the response is overwhelming. Uh, initially, uh, we we only prepared eighty five sets. If you actually uh, look at our 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 poster, and these eighty five sets are all gone, and we are actually uh, adding more stocks, uh, uh, more more routers, and to cater to the overwhelming demand. So it is a very very um, uh, uh, good promotion, I think. Uh, it doesn't come from me. <laughs> it doesn't come from me. It's from my colleague. So uh, I, I think it actually what we our objective is to promote this um, Gnet One um, software so that customers can actually use the router and uh, together with our instruments connected to Gnet One, and you will be able to perform all the uh, wonderful and amazing applications that Eugene has mentioned earlier. I think especially during this um, pandemic, um, the Internet of Things solutions are getting more and more uh, prevalent. So um, this is one, I think, one good way that we hope to contribute to society and to uh, allow our customers to benefit. And also, and that's why we have been, we have been doing a lot of um, uh, webinars, uh, I mean, Facebook Live like this, to share with public uh, to let them know more about the the, the Gnet One um, uh, software, I think just to recap, uh, for the past few uh, Facebook Live, we have done um, this um, Gnet One uh, software on PW three three six zero Power Logger PW three three six zero. I think the response are also very overwhelming. We have been getting more and more inquiries for the Power Loggers. Uh, thank you very much for support. Uh, we also have done the power quality analyzers PQ two one nine eight using the Gnet One as well. And uh, today we are actually doing this um, uh, Gnet One dashboard uh, function to to share with, uh, more of our customers. Yeah. So so um, to summarize, uh, remember to tap on the 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 promotion. So uh, we we have added about uh, fifty units more. So um, please please um, uh, uh, contact our distributors, our salesperson with more details uh, on the promotion mechanics. Okay, uh, I have two more questions here from uh, Mr. Ko. I think he's from Myanmar, Mingalaba. <laughs> okay, um, how to support after sales service, especially overseas? Okay, this is uh, something different. Uh, okay, a bit a bit sidetracked, uh, but I think we are still happy to answer. So I think um, depending on the country, um, we actually have a um, service center in Singapore. So um, some, of, some of our distributors actually send their products uh, to Singapore office um, to, to calibrate or to, uh, for the after-sales after service. Um, and sometimes certain instruments we actually send back to Japan uh, for calibration um, in view that maybe uh, uh, how about maybe some, some other countries uh, where our distributors can actually uh, manage on the uh, after-sales service, um, maybe it will be faster for them to, 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 to handle locally. There are also ways like this. So um, yeah, so if, if there's any product that uh, you will require our after-sales support, I think feel free to write in to us. I think Eugene also take care of the um, part of the Eugene's portfolio, also take care yes. of the after-sales service. Maybe Eugene, you can share uh, how can they write in to, 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 to us about uh, after-sales mm. service? Yeah, of course, uh, you can always write in to sales at hyoki.com.sg to indicate that you have uh, some um, serviceability issues. Um, for your product, for repair or for calibration uh, for Myanmar. And then also if you request for kind of any kind of training, user training uh, or training on how to do uh, remote monitoring, um, we can also offer that, that training package to you. Uh, of course, these are all free of charge uh, as, a service provide, as a service provider to you. Mm. Mm. Yes, uh, so diving on to what Eugene had mentioned, uh, we are doing a lot of um, Remote uh, remote uh, virtual demo session for our customers. If you log on to www.hyoki.com.sg, 
uh, the details are there. Uh, and also, if you log on to hugi.com.sg, there's a live chat function, there's a contact form function. We've added, added in a lot of features online uh, to connect with our customers. So uh, in case uh, if you don't get uh, too tired of me, I'm actually handing the live chat, so I'll be able to, to answer your inquiries. If I'm not able to do so, Eugene will be supporting me That's right. uh, on the inquiries as well. Um, we also have another question. Oh, thanks. Uh, from Indonesia, how many agents you have in Indonesia? We have uh, quite a few distributors. So um, if you're interested uh, to, to purchase or uh, Hyuki products, you can actually write in to um, sgsales at hyuki.com.sg. I repeat, sgsales at hyuki.com.sg. Uh, or you can write to me, <laughs> marketing at hyuki.com.sg. I will be happy to, to assist you to link you out with our distributors. Okay. All right, um, any other questions? If not, um, maybe uh, to end this session, maybe Eugene, uh, will you be able to, to give a last, last note on um, uh, this GNET1 uh, dashboard function? If, uh, what, 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 what actually, uh, to you in your opinion, um, what do you like best about this GNET1 dashboard function? Okay, the, I, like, I, like so, I, I, I like so much of these uh, features um, because it's able to record simultaneously up to 15 instruments. That's the most important. Okay, in, in the past, before even this Genet 1 uh, software was developed, uh, as, a, as an operator myself, if I have a PQA, I have a data logger, and I want to correlate certain parameters together in the same time timestamp. So let's say if I start at this time, okay, for PQA and data logger, all my measurement data will follow this particular timestamp, zero second, okay, then one second, two second, three second, right? So on and so forth, okay? Now I need to synchronize the timestamp if I'm using, uh, if I'm measuring different products together. But with Janet one, I can connect all the 15 instruments at the same timestamp. That makes my job so much easier as an operator so that I can correlate all the parameters because it's all synchronized. And then, of course, the second thing is that you can monitor the waveform, you can monitor the, the, the numerical value, and then you can monitor all the uh, CSV uh, data that is captured. Okay, that is for logging. Mm -hmm. And then for uh, console function, you have FTP function, one of the very important features. Why, why FTP? For example, if you set FTP for the particular product, it will automatically send the data Let's say you record for one day, you will send the data automatically to your laptop without you having to do anything. Okay, that is what we call by automated uh, measurement transfer. A lot of companies are doing that. A lot of our customers are doing that, this FTP function. So with that, the engineer doesn't even need to do anything. They just need to go to the computer, open up the folder, and then they can view all the different parameters taken for each day. Okay, very easy, very automated. And of course, the last function will be the dashboard. Okay, the dash, this dashboard right. I mentioned is the BMS. One view, you can see all the measurement taken at the same time. Yeah. So many. There's uh, also one more function. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's also one more function if I'm not wrong. Uh, Eugene, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there's, the, the customer is, is also able to actually to uh, compile all the data in one folder, right? Uh, that's why they can actually, uh, it's easier for them um, to, to sort out the, 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 the measurement. So you don't have to, you know, in your, in your lab, you know, sometimes as an engineer, I think sometimes you are quite disorganized <laughs> for yes. me. Okay, so, so our files tend to be running around. But with GNET1, there's, um, there's a capability that you are able to create one folder and capture all the, instru all the instruments measurements in one folder. Mm. And um, after this, you will be able to sort out. I think for, for, um, uh, solution providers where you have maybe multiple projects uh, it is quite useful for you you are able to rename the folder as project a project b and project c and for future uh, you will be able to find uh, this uh, measurement uh, folders easily and you will be able to to uh, show it to your to your respective customers so i think there's one thing is also very useful as well i think uh, it's somehow um uh, probably not touch on but i think it is um, it is still very important mm -hmm. Okay, we have one customer here. Uh, he's asking, Eugene, I have an IM3536 LCR meter. Can I use it with GNET1? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Only PQA, uh, power logger, data logger, memory recorder, and power analyzer. But the LCR range is not included. Mm. Mm. 
Okay, we hope we hope that we have answered uh, Mr. Chung. <laughs> okay, so uh, with that, I think um, I just want to sum up um, uh, this today's session. We are almost coming to one hour. Um, I think Ginette One is a very useful function, but most importantly, you need to purchase Hiroki products mm -hmm. in order to, to use the Ginette One function. So uh, we hope that you can have trust in our products and also um, to, uh, to to, to use our products in your in your daily operation. So um, in case um, if you are still um, uh, uh, you have not purchased Hiyoki products, you can feel free to write into us. You can write write to marketing at hiyoki.com.sg. I repeat, marketing at hiyoki.com.sg will be happy to assist you. And um, this few months, we have been receiving um, quite a number of inquiries on um, the power loggers uh, to work hand in hand with the remote function. Um, uh, in case if you are you are actually um, bound at home, we will also be able to do an online session with you, a, a demo, virtual demo session, so that you will be able to to, to view how how the impact or, or the, the the capabilities of, of Ginette One to, to match up with our instruments. All right, so there are customers who are in Malaysia, there are customers in Myanmar, Thailand, who write to us, uh, all the way also from New Zealand and Australia. Uh, it's also our territories as well, um, who, are, who are not very sure about products and they actually wrote into us and they would like to do a virtual demo and we do all this for the customers uh, for free. Uh, then again, it's also our part of uh, actually part of uh, our corporate philosophy is to contribute to society. So it's one way that we would like to help out our customers. So uh, feel free to write into us. We'll be happy to exist. All right. So with that, uh, we have now come to the end of uh, today's Facebook Live, introducing the new Ginette One dashboard function. My name is Kevin, and uh, together with me is Eugene. And um, uh, finally, we'd like to thank everyone of you for taking your time. And see you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Take care.